All right, you beautiful humans. I am fresh off of a run and ready to dive into the Thunderbolt performance when it comes to these M1 Pro and M1 Max machines and specifically addressing some buying decisions when it comes to DIY enclosures and NVMe SSDs because having a very fast machine seems to have folks looking for ludicrous speeds in all aspects of their workflows. And the bigger question is, are these Thunderbolt ports finally getting the power that they need and dealing with that communication protocol as they should? But according to iFixit, it does seem as if Apple is still using those Intel Thunderbolt retimers to clean up and repeat that signal. And what I will be sharing is synthetic benchmarks, some large file transfer results, video export times, and really talking about running a virtual machine and even gaming on these external drives. And I plan to have some tables or graphs depending on how this edit goes, uh, but I will leave these up while I'm talking so that you can read through the information. And I will be featuring the USB 4 enclosure from Acasis, which has the Titan Ridge controller and is able to work with Thunderbolt 3 and 4 and can also fall back to USB type C. And I have tested that on the iPad Air Gen 4 as well as the AMD Ryzen uh, PC build that we have. We also have the Thunderbolt 3 enclosure from Fledging, which has the Alpine Ridge controller and is exclusive to Thunderbolt 3 when it comes to your particular I.O. And there is the newly added to my collection USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 with the Realtek controller in this enclosure from Sabrent, as well as a couple of tests with the 3.1 Gen 2 drive from SanDisk. And the SSDs that we'll be using are the Western Digital SN750 and the SN850 and the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. And we will be addressing those advertised read and write speeds because I'll make the buying mistakes for you with some of these drives because you'll wanna choose wisely when using these particular enclosures depending on what your needs are. However, you may find some pretty surprising results. And of course, let's start off with the biggest disclaimer here that when you're choosing the NVMEs, you may get sucked into the advertised read and write speeds, especially when considering between a PCIe Gen 3 and a PCIe Gen 4, in which the Gen 4 will have the higher read and write typically, and sometimes even a bigger or more efficient cache. Although the Samsung's 96 layer TLC NAND over the 64 layer TLC NAND in the Western Digital may be better on paper, but as a reminder, you'll be limited by the board and controller of these uh, enclosures. And it really does start to become more of a moot point. And not to mention Western Digital, based on my testing, does manage the cache quite well. And diving into these synthetic benchmarks, because you know, that's just really my favorite. I did work with Dismark on all of these enclosures and SSD combinations, or at least as many as I could stand. And overall with each port having dedicated bus, a dedicated bus like the M1, we are seeing better write speeds on these updated Macs when compared to the previous gen, although you'll still notice a couple of values here that are in line with what I've tested previously and are also some known issues. And first, you'll see that the 970 EVO Plus is still behind on those write speeds when compared to the SN750, both being PCIe Gen 3, and the enclosure manufacturers are also stating that this is an issue, like they know it, they've tested it. And so if you are looking at the SN850 as well, which is a Gen 4 SSD, even though it should fall back to Gen 3 in that enclosure, it is still having an issue with those write speeds on those benchmarks. And I did test this, the, the same thing on my Intel MacBook Pro, getting very similar results. And I even ran a test that I did on the M1 Mac in a previous video where I tried to slam those Thunderbolt ports with other tasks. And you'll see here that it didn't really affect the SN750. However, the write speeds on the 970 EVO Plus and 850 did get a small bump in those Thunderbolt enclosures, which I didn't spend too much time on this, but my curiosity may have me going back down that rabbit hole. And moving over to a transfer of a 151 gig, yeah, it's a 151 gigabyte folder from the internal drive, you will see some similar results among the USB 4 and Thunderbolt 3 enclosures with the 970 EVO Plus and the 850 having similar times and with a peak write of 1.2 gigs per second with it leveling out and the SN 750 having peak write speeds of 2.4 gigs with it also leveling out but both coming in at about 42 and 43 seconds. However, as I expected with transferring a 322 gigabyte folder to these SSDs, we were getting some throttling that occurred with that last 50 gigs on that Thunderbolt enclosure as the cache is really getting worked. And whereas 
on the 3.1 Gen 2 enclosure, it remained at a constant as it's likely that the cache was able to keep up with those slower write speeds. And my disclaimer here is that if transferring large files all day back and forth or creating large backups is in your workflow, then this may be a consideration for you. Although in RAID setups, they do seem to perform better. And I hope to bring that to the channel uh, in the foreseeable future. And one of my other go-to tests is that I've performed on other videos is comparing the export times of a 4K multicam timeline that is over 19 minutes in length and you may or may not be surprised by these findings, but interesting to find almost identical export times on these drives, because as I've said in previous videos, even though that throughput can play a role here, you are also at the mercy of how fast that program is reading and writing to the drive. But if you're also curious, the Sabret enclosure was the hottest when it came to the thermals, and we're talking about the enclosure itself, but it is also the smallest footprint with the case itself, hovering at around 47 degrees Celsius, while the other enclosures were around 42 degrees Celsius. And of course, why does it make sense to even make these comparisons? Because those Gen 4 SSDs are sometimes one and a half times more expensive than the Gen 3. And I do have an honorable mention from Silicon Power, which is a Gen 4 PCIe SSD, but I got it at a Gen 3 price. And I would recommend it as an option if you can get it on a deal as it did seem to work well for me. However, I do want to mention that I've heard from several of you in the community stating that the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus SSDs are also slower on those write speeds. So also like keeping that in mind because on paper they are wicked fast, but it, in certain cases it can come down to that fallback not really happening as it should in that protocol. Which leads me over to the 970 EVO Plus in that it is Gen 3, but for some reason it is just not playing well in this particular sandbox. But as far as choosing between Gen 3 or 4, this really is about saving some money unless for some reason you may find yourself placing these into a PC where you will get much closer to those advertised speeds. Or we will eventually, we will eventually get enclosures this particular size that will support the Gen 4 chip. And another benefit here is that the total cost of these enclosures, including the SSDs, will be more expensive in the short term when compared to a pre-built enclosure. However, in a tech world, where the upgradability is really shrinking, especially with Apple, it is nice to have options to be able, like if you're looking to upgrade the enclosure as they get updated or even the SSDs. And you can also run virtual machines on these SSDs, which I've done videos on this, on how to install Windows through Parallels and having that reside on the SSD. And you can even do some gaming on these drives as well, because the biggest question might be, but how well does it actually run on these external SSDs. And honestly, you can game on a spinning hard drive because once the game is loaded, then you're on the move. However, it is nice to have these SSDs to continue loading upcoming scenes compared to a spinning hard drive or you know, as you advance through the levels as you move through the game. And as a side note, I would like to mention that when you eject these Thunderbolt 3 enclosures, or the Thunderbolt 3 and or the Thunderbolt and USB 4 enclosures from the computer, it will continue to draw power even if it's ejected. And you may notice it's staying warm because there's still a power draw there. So just go ahead and remove it once you've ejected it. I also want to address some additional issues that others may have experienced on the M1 machines, and that is randomly disconnecting from the device. And all of these enclosures here that I have tested on both machines, especially on the M1 for, for quite some time, I've never once had them randomly disconnect. And I do want to share my original intention of this video was that stating my opinion about the internal SSDs on these M1 Pro and Max machines, because I honestly believe that with the ridiculous speeds in these machines, the upgrade tax on these SSDs may be worth it for those of you who want to forgo external drives altogether, and especially when you compare the price of some of these external setups. However, one thing I particularly, I consider, and something that you may be thinking about as well, is that having these external drives allows me to keep the bulk of the bloat off of the internal, keeping it as slim as possible, and for, and for some reason, I may want to work on a project or two without being tethered then i can because i still have quite a bit of available space on my one terabyte internal drive and not to mention for those of us working on multiple devices you can literally just carry your operating system virtual machines app libraries and games wherever you go 
So as you've seen here, don't just rely on those synthetic benchmarks. Do take a look at your workflow and consider the software that you're using and the read and write speeds of those particular programs. However, do your research and find the SSDs that these brands are also recommending. So be sure to hang out with me here or over there on Twitter. I hope that you all have a wonderful day while rocking those beautiful faces. And I hope to see you right back here on the next one. Ooh, I gotta go stretch.